Hello, I'm going to show you how to get the most out of your internet connection. I'm pretty sure most of you will have experienced a, a game lagging or a video conference call breaking up, or maybe even a spinning wheel while streaming a movie on TV. More than likely, this is going to be down to a Wi Fi connection causing interference, and possibly even from your neighbor's house where they're also using Wi Fi interfering. So I'm going to show you how, with the use of a simple Ethernet cable, one like this, you can plug into the back of your router or router, where you'll find nearly every router has on the back four ports that are normally yellow in colour and marked either LAN or Ethernet. And by simply plugging in a cable into the back, and then into the device, the back of the TV or games console, you can massively improve the performance. So let me take my iPhone here and I'm going to show you the difference between Wi-Fi and Ethernet. And not just in bandwidth, but what it means for latency. It's 20 times faster than 2.4 gigabit Wi-Fi in responsiveness and also 20 times the amount of bandwidth. Let's uh, plug in an Ethernet cable to my iPhone. So yes, you can actually do this. As you can see, I've got an adapter with an Ethernet cable. You can see it on the iPhone here. We've actually got an Ethernet connection. And you can see I've got 10, 100 and 1 gigabit connection. And what I'm going to do now is launch ping. And I'm simply going to uh, ping back to the router over the Ethernet. We'll let this run for a few seconds and we'll just skip through once this has done about a couple of hundred ping messages. Ping is very simply just a case of a hello message, hello to the router and the router responds back hello. And from a packet size there are about 64 bytes. So in reality what we're going to do in this time is send less information or text than what an entire email would be but we're sending lots of messages, so we're measuring performance through the network. So let me stop this and we can take a look at the numbers. OK, got the numbers here. If you're not interested in the numbers and just want to know how to fix the problem, skip ahead and I'll show you multiple ways of connecting using Ethernet for less than the cost of one month's rental of your uh, broadband connection. So. On the board here we've got the results from the phone we've got one gigabit ethernet and the number i'm most interested in here is the time that it takes here and you can see we've got the average then here over uh, 500 packets roughly and we can see that on average it's taking 1.2 milliseconds to send that hello message to the router and get it back from the router if we then jump to Wi-Fi, we'll go to 5 gig, which is the better Wi-Fi, less congestion, more channels. We can see the average here is 2.7 milliseconds, so over double the time it takes with Ethernet. So again, you can see we've got speeds here, half a millisecond, whereas here we're up sort of two milliseconds is a good time on 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. We then jump to 2.4 gigahertz, which all of your routers will do. And when you get a certain distance or through several walls or floors, your router will switch to 2.4 gigahertz as the range is longer on that. And what we can see here is the average on this jumps up to 21 milliseconds. And we've got times here from sort of two milliseconds up to sort of 60 milliseconds on the network. And that's just because of congestion on the airwaves. Now, the final test I've done here is with 2.4 gigahertz, and I've actually put two devices on, one downloading or doing a speed test whilst doing the ping. So this could simulate maybe a games console downloading the game. At the same time, it's something dependent on lots of packets like voice going through or Zoom call. What would be happening to your network? And you can see the average time here is 24 and a half milliseconds, so a quarter of a second. But we've got the max time 
that over two seconds. So you can imagine, you get a zoom call, if you're losing that data for two seconds, that's going to break up. And again, we've also got here packet loss. So we've lost 2% of the network traffic, the data being sent. We've literally lost it. That's gone. So the games console will send more than 60 packets a second. And that's going to just contain lots of very small information, details about where players have moved, what's happened in the game. It's just going to be lots of coordinates, so it's going to be very small amounts of information, but they're going to be time critical, which is going to be your responsiveness of the game. And again, voice and video will use up to 50 packets per second. And incidentally, that's one packet every 1.2 milliseconds. So you can see if you're on Wi-Fi, even Wi-Fi 5, you're not able to really only just meet that requirement. And that's assuming that there's nothing else interfering or using the same radio at that time. In which case, you're going to lose that data. So, just to talk about bandwidth, those 500 pings were 64 bytes each. That works out at 32 kilobytes. And across a really basic level um, internet connection of 25 megabits, that would take 0.6 for a second, so half a second. So you can see that even if you had a one gig connection, so a thousand megabits per second, that this would only be a fraction of a second to send. It wouldn't actually really make any difference because at this sort of time, the latency, which is the time it takes to send the packets and the information, would be the bigger driving factor. So quite often when people say, oh, the internet's not very good or it's not working or so-and-so ISP is not good. It's not actually down to that ISP or the lack of bandwidth or the package. It's down to your networking. One other point before we look at the solutions. Come back to the bandwidth. Games and games consoles, quite often now you can have a game that's over 100 gigabytes. I think some of them are 200 gigabytes. Now, on a basic 25 megabit, ADSL2 connection here in the UK. If you're getting the full network connectivity, that would take 10 hours. However, if that was uh, dropping down to say 10 megabits because of a poor Wi Fi connection, that could take over 25 hours. And that's with the same 25 megabit connection. So plugging in an Ethernet cable here will do two things it will massively reduce the download time but it will also stop all that traffic across the Wi-Fi, which will free up the radio waves for your mobile phones, for your Zoom calls, for other things. Again, if you're streaming videos, a 1080p video is only about five megabits per second. So one fifth of a 25 megabit internet connection. So again, these devices streaming videos tend to buffer, so they'll read the data in they'll hold a certain amount, several seconds worth, so they can be continually pulling the data down. So time doesn't matter so much here, it's more bandwidth. But again, this bandwidth needs to go across Wi-Fi or the network. So again, if we can get an ethernet cable to smart TVs, we can take this bandwidth or this demand off of the Wi-Fi and free those airwaves up for laptops, mobile phones and other devices that it's not practical to have an Ethernet cable to. Let's, uh, let's look at the options. So, cable-wise, we've got a couple of options. You've got your Ethernet cables, and you can get these quite heavy, almost industrial, what you'd use really in IT, in sort of a data center, or in an office space. It's quite a thick cable. You can also get these flat cables, which are really good because they'll just run around the edge of a room, tuck under a carpet, and because they're flat, you don't need to go to any great trouble of lifting floorboards and drilling through walls to actually route these cables. You can actually run these quite comfortably around the edge of a room under a carpet to get from the router to a device. Stepping up from that, 
we can get into uh, running structured cable. So here I've got a box of Ethernet cable and this literally is a reel of cable. As you can see here, you can then run this around the house under floorboards, through walls. And then on the end here, you basically strip the end of the cable and you can fit a plug. And that plug will then with a crimp tool, crimp in, fasten to the end. Fitting the plugs is a little bit fiddly and you need specialist tools. However, you can get these uh, keystone plugs. And here, it's just a case of punching down the wires into the relevant colors. That cable will then plug in. Once you've got the cable mounted in a keystone, that can actually mount into a various little brackets. So you can get little wall mounts like this, that would just take a keystone, and that can be fastened to the wall and into which you can actually then have the cable going in. And from there, you can then plug in a little Ethernet cable from there into the back of your games console or wherever. Let's uh, jump over to uh, computer here and we'll just run through a few options on the computer and have a look at some of these cables and devices. Okay, so I've just done a quick search here on Google, Google Shopping. Um, obviously I'm in the UK, so this is UK prices. You can see here, we've got lots of different cables. Now from the purpose of a home network, Cat5e will be absolutely fine. Cat6 is better, though the cable is thicker and less flexible, unless it's one of these flat cables. So just bear that in mind if you're gonna wrestle this cable um, around the room. Something like one of these uh, Cat6 outdoor cables would be a lot more less flexible than uh, say this Cat5e cable. However, Cat6 would work better for a longer length and higher speeds. But in the case of the Ethernet, you can run one gig and even two and a half gig quite comfortably across Cat5e. Um, a higher level, if you're going to look to actually install cable under the floor and terminate the ends, you want to be going Cat6, not Cat5e because the cost difference between the two reels of cable is next to nothing compared to the time and effort it would take to actually install the cables throughout a house. So just go down here a bit, we can see we've got these flat cables. Now these cables here are really quite useful just to run around the uh, house. Um, I would advise steering clear of things like the Cat7 and Cat6a because you'll find that the end of the cables here have got these metal plugs on the end. They tend to be thicker again and they will give you no benefit um, in a home networking environment. So that's your cable options and literally cabling that, you're literally going from the back of the router into the uh, device. You can get little joiners. You can see here, these joiners can um, basically allow you to plug two cables together. Grab. So you can literally plug a cable in there and plug another one together. So if you needed to link perhaps from a room, you could just run, say, a flat cable up to a room, put one of these plugs on the end, and then run a smaller cable to the device. So back on the screen here, I'm going to look at a couple of other things. One option could be power line adapters. Now, the power line adapter will add additional latency. It won't be as fast as just the Ethernet cable without, but it does allow you to use the power cables throughout the house to actually get the connection from maybe a lower floor to an upper floor easily without running cables. Um, this would again get the signal off of the Wi-Fi, which would help with other devices. Wi-Fi range extenders. Um, I would avoid these unless you absolutely need them. Um, in essence, what they do is double up the amount of Wi-Fi traffic and half the throughput of the Wi-Fi. Because um, basically you get a Wi-Fi signal to the Wi-Fi extender and then from the Wi-Fi extender back to the other Wi-Fi device. So you've doubled up the amount of traffic that needs to go over the Wi-Fi and half your bandwidth. Caveat to that, if you want to really go up a level, is something like a mesh Wi-Fi network. Um, this will allow you to put multiple devices around the house 
and they tend to use dedicated channels, these devices, um, to send the data between them. And many of them support what they call Ethernet backhaul, which basically means you can run an Ethernet cable from each of these devices to your router. So again, back to these ports on the back to each one of these mesh devices. And they will then use Ethernet to send the data to each of the mesh devices. And that would then allow you to even do things like seamless roaming. So you could be on a video call out on an access point, say, in the garden, and you could walk from the other end of the house across multiple access points and still maintain that call because they will carry that signal. But this is a different topic. So, I hope you found this uh, interesting. Um, if you want to learn more about networking and perhaps different layers and things you can do to improve your network, let me know in the comments below and uh, we'll see where we go. Thank you very much.